So how do you name a column in Google Sheets? Well, it's simple. You select a column, go to data, go to named ranges, and then you can name it here just like this. And there is your name range. So you could add another one just by selecting that column, click add a range again, and then we could add something like amount. And you can do this as many times as you need to. Now, one thing to notice is this is doing the full column. So you can set just a specific rows or data set. So you could select something like this. And maybe this might be your 2024 sales, something like this. Now, one thing to note is there is restrictions on your name ranges. So for example, can't start with a number, can't have the words true or false, can't contain spaces or punctuation, and can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. So in this case, you'd have to do something like sales, 2024, and then that would work. So you could set things like this manually where you have the years or whatever it is. And then if you need to delete a named range or column, just hit that edit button and then delete range, just like that. So let's look at how to use this real quick. And then I'm gonna show you the difference between this and using a table and kind of the pros and cons of each. So on this dashboard, we're going to make a little table here showing our reps, number and dollar amount of sales. So we can pull in our reps using something like unique and then that sales rep reference, just like that. Now one drawback here is this does show that top sell and so one thing we may want to do is even something like a filter and do sales rep is not equal to sales rep. Something like that. And then that will get rid of it. It's just an extra step, but I'll show you how that differs when using a table. So from here, then we could just do a count ifs, the sales rep, where it's equal to the rep here. And then let that auto fill down just like that. And there's our number of sales quickly and easily. So then we could go to dollar amount of sales. In this case, we'd use some ifs, and then we use that amount field. And then where that sales rep is equal to our rep here, and then let that fill down. And then we could add a little bit of dollar formatting right there. Maybe get rid of those decimals. And so there is using name ranges, our rep with number and dollar amount of sales. Now, if you have a table, those name references are already in place. And so let's take a look at what it would look like here. So unique. And then the difference is here you start with what the table is named. It's not the tab, it's what's named right here. And so if we start typing here, sales, and you'll see our sales rep here, but you see a slightly different reference. And this is what the table looks like. You can see the little table icon. And so here we could do sales rep, just like that. And one difference you'll notice immediately is this does not include the header. And so that does make some of this a little more streamlined. And so then we can just do a very similar thing, uh, count if or count ifs, and then we'll do sales. And then we can select that sales rep and compare it to our rep here. Let that auto fill, just like that. Then we can do the same thing here with our sum ifs, and then our sales table again. And then we just need that amount field, comma, sales, sales rep and our rep here. Let that autofill and we can add our currency right there, remove decimal places, I missed it on that one, there we go. So that's the two ways you can handle that. Now, one of the things that we saw with this one is that it was including the header and it's because on our named range, we have the header included. And the table, it handles automatically whether you want to include the header or not. So you could address this by editing this and adding a two here at the top. And that would then exclude the header. So then if we come back here, we can get rid of this filter and just do that sales rep. And now it works the same. Now the one issue with this method though, is now we have hard coded that and reference. So the tables are not hard coded. Whenever you add a row to the table, it's automatically included. So the only way you would have it not included is if it's down here outside of that table. And so if we delete all the rows outside the table, now if we add new rows, these are all inside the table and will be automatically included.
So that's one difference is with the table, you don't ever have to update the reference. Now with name ranges, the way you handle that to not have to update is by including that header because then you don't have to specify that end reference. And so this method is a little more resilient, but then you do have to comp for that header being included. Now, another advantage of the table is with the named ranges, you have to add each one manually. And so if we want to go back and add sector, we'd have to come back here and add it manually just like this. However, with the table, all the columns are automatically added. And so if you don't have a particular reason for not using a table, I would probably recommend using it just because that's the way that Google Sheets is moving towards. And so I think more and more things are going to support and be integrated into this. But I understand sometimes you do need a manual table. Maybe it's just because it's part of a tab, whatever it is, and you need a little more manual control. In that case, then you just have to do a couple little things to adapt that to work appropriately. So that is it for today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a great day.